In this video, you're going to learn how to write a quadratic in standard form by completing the square. And we're going to do an easy example, a medium example, and a more challenging example. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can do these on your own, but we're going to go through them together. The form that we're trying to get them into is this form right here. Notice the vertex H and K. The A involves a vertical stretch or vertical shrink. And the first thing we want to do here is we want to take a look at the quadratic and we want to rearrange it so that we can complete the square. So the first thing that I recommend doing is moving the constant, this number over here, to the other side of the equation. So I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. So that gives us y minus 3 equals x squared plus 4x. Now when you look at a quadratic, notice it's in this form here, ax squared plus bx plus c. You want to take that number that comes in front of or to the left of the x, that's the b value. You want to divide it by 2 and then take that quantity squared. Okay. So in this case, you can see the number in front of the x is 4. We take half of 4. You can do that work on the side if you want. 4 divided by 2 squared. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4. Out of thin air, I'm adding 4 to the right side of the equation. So to keep it balanced, I'm going to add 4 to the left side. So this gives us y plus 1 equals... And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this as a binomial squared. So it's going to be x plus 2, the quantity squared. It's always going to be half of this b value. So if this was minus 4x, I would write minus 2 here. Okay, we're almost there now. The last thing is I'm going to subtract 1 because what I want to do is I want to get y by itself. So y equals x plus 2 squared minus 1. And you can see the vertex is going to be negative 2, negative 1. Remember the one group with the x it's going to have the opposite sign because this is x minus h. So the vertex negative 2, negative 1, and you got it. So for number 2 now, a little bit more challenge here, here. And what makes this more challenging is that we have a coefficient, a number in front of the x squared term. Okay, so our a value is not 1, it's 3 in this case. Same process though. What we want to do is think of f of x as like y, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the constant, the number, to the other side by doing the opposite, adding 1. So that gives us y plus 1 equals 3x squared plus 12x. What I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out that coefficient, the 3. We're not taking the greatest common factor. We're just factoring out the 3 out of both of these two terms here. So we have 3x squared plus 4x plus blank okay, equals y plus 1. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to complete the square. So we're going to take b divided by 2 and square it. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4. Now, the mistake that students make is that they say, all right, you know, Mario, I added 4 to the right. Don't I add 4 to the left? Well, the thing is to see how this 4 is inside of the parentheses. So actually, out of thin air, we're adding 3 times 4, which is 12, to the right side of the equation. To keep it balanced, we have to add 12 to the left side. Okay? So are you with me so far? So now what we have is y plus 13 equals 3. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor this quantity in the parentheses, and it's going to be x plus 2 squared. Very similar to this previous problem. So it's always half of that, that b value. If this was minus 4x, it would be minus 2. The last thing is to move the 13 to the other side to get the y by itself. So you can see our final result is 3 times x plus 2 squared minus 13. And our vertex is going to be at negative 2 negative 13. Remember this one in parentheses is the opposite sign. Okay, last example. See if you can do this one. This is probably the most challenging example because it involves a fraction as well as a negative. Okay, so what would you do on this one? What I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, subtract 5 like I normally do, okay, just to get the constant out of the way on the other side of the equation. So now we have negative 1 fourth x squared minus 2x. I'm going to factor out the negative 1 fourth. Okay, now here's the thing. When you factor out okay, something. It's like dividing it out, right? And so what you have to do on the inside of the parentheses here is you have to multiply by the reciprocal, okay? So here, because I divided out negative one-fourth, I'm going to multiply by negative four, and so that's going to give me x squared plus 8x. Now, if you want to check your work, uh, go ahead and distribute the negative one-fourth in. You see that gives us back negative one-fourth x squared. It also gives us back negative 2x. Here's where we complete the square, b divided by 2 squared. So 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 squared is 16. So do I add 16 to the left? No, because remember, it's negative 1 fourth times 16. I actually subtracted 4 from the right side, because that's a negative 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 4 from the uh, left side as well to keep this balanced. So we have y minus 9 
equals negative one fourth. And now I'm just gonna factor this, it's gonna be x plus four, the quantity squared. Remember, it's half of this b value. If it was minus eight x, I would write minus four. And then the last step is just to add the nine to the other side. So our final result is gonna be y equals negative one fourth x plus four squared uh, plus nine. And our vertex is gonna be negative four, positive nine. Notice the a value is negative, that means it's opening down. The one fourth is gonna compress it, so it's gonna be like a little bit wider like that. If you wanna see how to solve equations by completing the square, check out the video I did right there. I'll see you over in that video.